everyone, welcome to the episode 360 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. A couple of early concerts, a moped accident, and the premiere of Magical Mystery Tour are some of the highlights of this episode. Let's start with the 26th of December 1961 and with the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best on drums, performing at the Tower Barroom in Wallasey along with Rory Storm and the Hurricanes and Tony Osborne. The event, the Boxing Night Big Beat Ball, was organized by Sam Leach. Moving forward one year in 1962, we find the Beatles, now in their definitive lineup, featuring Ringo Starr on drums, resuming their residency at the Star Club in Hamburg, West Germany. On the 26th of December 1963, the Beatles came back to the Astoria Cinema in London for the second night of their The Beatles Christmas Show, with two houses in the same evening. Almost the same story one year later, in 1964, with the Beatles featured in the Another Beatles Christmas Show production, this time at the Audience Cinema in Hammersmith, London. Let's move to 1965 with two events worth of our attention. Beatles driver Alf Bicknell brought George Harrison to his parents' bungalow in Appleton Thorn, near Warrington, for a surprise visit. A more dramatic event took place at night, in Liverpool, while Paul McCartney, visiting his family for the festivities, was showing the neighborhood to his friend Tara Brown, the heir of the Guinness Empire. Paul fell off his scooter, chipping one of his front teeth and scaring his right upper lip. According to Paul, quoted in the anthology book, that was why I started to grow a moustache. It was pretty embarrassing, because around that time you knew your picture would get winged off the teeny boppery magazines like 16, and it was pretty difficult to have a new picture taken with a big fat lip. So I started to grow a moustache. It caught on with the guys in the group. If one of us did something like growing his hair long and we liked the idea, we'd all tend to do it. In the end, Paul had his tooth capped and his lip repaired with a plastic surgery. Having said that, I can assure you that there is an extremely small chance that visiting www.simonmas.com support can cause you bodily harm. On the contrary, doing any of the things listed there and helping me to produce more music-related content for you will improve your spirits. Who knows, if you decided to buy the limited NFTs with the deluxe edition of What A Fab Day, one day you might be able to resell them and improve your finances too. Thank you for showing me some love and helping me growing our little community of music lovers. Let's close the episode with the 26th of December 1967 world premiere of the Magical Mystery Tour film. The flicks had been hammered down to 55 minutes from 10 hours of raw footage, and the Beatles were sure enough of the final result that they negotiated a deal with BBC for its premiere on BBC One. There was a problem, though. Ringo, in the anthology book, explains. Being British, we thought we'd give it to the BBC, which in those days was the biggest channel, who showed it in black and white we were stupid and they were stupid. Despite the film was in color, BBC One did not have all the transmissions in color. It was also decided to air Magical Mystery Tour at 8.35 pm on Boxing Day, a slot traditionally reserved to family films and popular music hall type entertainment. It was an unmitigated disaster. It was the first time that critics and public alike reacted in a uniformly negative way to a Beatles release. The amateurish approach to the production that led to many flaws in the film, including its weak internal cohesion, poor camera angles, boring or non-existent plot, 
was aggravated by the fact that the film was shown in black and white and at that time of the day. Even showing the film a few days later in color on BBC2 didn't change the critical perspective of it, since there were only 200,000 color TV sets in the whole United Kingdom at the time. Such was the failure that no American network wanted to touch the film, and Magical Mystery Tour remained unreleased until 1974, when it had a limited cinema run, and until 1985 on TV. Any idea of immediately releasing the film in cinemas was also scrapped, due to its insufficient length. And this is it for the day! There will be more about Magical Mystery Tour tomorrow, if you care to join me for another show. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation! Simon Mas, music you love!